All right, so now I have my plate here. Uh, this is an older plate that I've used. It's on zinc, uh, so it's not got that copper look that my students are used to seeing. Uh, this plate was done in, I guess, 2003, uh, 2002, maybe 2002, I can't remember. Um, so, long time ago, um, so it's 2020, so 17, 18 year old uh, plate here that I've had in my drawer. I haven't inked it up in, in a long time, so I thought this would be perfect to test out with my experiment here. So, I got my ink from the other day still set up, so I'm just going to grab that ink first. Just grab from that and take what I can off of I'll look and see if I got enough and I think that's that will be enough to do everything I want for just one process yeah put this away okay so now I'm going to carefully put the ink across the surface of my plate Okay, so that inked up nicely. It's just the right amount of ink. Kind of even pushed it kind of thin at the end there, but etching, you don't need that much ink. So I covered the whole plate. Now I'm cleaning it off a little bit off the surface so I don't have big pools of it. Now, I'm gonna get some, some kind of yellow pages. This is just a Harbor Freight catalog. Feels like the same kind of paper. I'm gonna lay it across the surface here, and I'm gonna get rid of the stickiness of the ink before I use my Tarleton. So, give it a nice light rub. So now it's not as shiny and the oil is reduced. Now this is not technically Tarleton. Um, this was kind of a hose material that we used to do French drains in my backyard. And it's kind of a, a mesh that goes over the pipe and I didn't have any Tarleton. So this looks fairly similar. So hopefully this works. Now the key about this, you want to get this in as tight as you can at the beginning get a nice little tight kind of pad here so it kind of hits and when you're brushing it it goes right across the surface so first thing I always like to do is I also don't like to be using a slick surface when I do so I got one of these kind of uh, material that you use to keep your rug in place. All right, so I'm just going to cut a little pad off of that. So 
So when you're working in a tight little studio space, you want to make sure you utilize your surface areas as much as possible. So you can turn your ink station into a wiping station by just adding that on there. And it's going to keep things from shifting on you when you rub. Okay. So now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to do little circles. And as you do this, you'll start to see the image appear and you'll see a little bit of black residue start to show up. And the image will start to show up as you go through. And it's starting to get nice and black at my surface. Don't worry about it. It still will clean even if it turns dark. I recommend you use an old plate for the first time so you don't ruin a good plate right at the beginning. Make sure you've made some few prints off of your plate before you do this because I do not know if this is going to be a sustainable process or a process that <clears throat> over time will ruin your plate. So I've always liked this image. So, now I'm going to take my boards here, okay, and these are going to go along the side, like so. I want to make sure that they fit. I put a piece of plexiglass in here in the gap so it doesn't, doesn't have this funky dip, and it stays pretty level, all right, with the image that's currently there, okay. Uh, I want to make sure it didn't go past my area so I want to test to make sure that all the pieces fit and that there's no gap there we go that's the right way this was not completely squared okay now <clears throat> so there is my my frame now you. I have also a little bit of mesh. I want to make sure that fits. And I'm going to be putting this inside. The idea of this is you need to have a hot glue gun, some glue sticks, and some wood that go around the base. Okay, now the wood's going to go all the way around, like so, and then we're going to pour our plaster in here. But 
we're first going to put the plate down, put this down, then we're going to put the frame and glue it in. So, all right, let's just give you an idea of what you need. Plastic, a frame, and a glue gun, and a metal plate, and your plaster. And this is the plaster we're using, Plaster of Paris. Uh, get it at any hardware store. Costs about nine dollars. Make sure you read the directions. The number one thing: make sure you use cold water. Number one, uh, another thing to remember: wear a mask. You don't want this in your lungs. Okay. All right. Here we go. Of my plaster, and as I do that, I want to make sure that this stays out. And so this is how I'm going to hang this whole piece. All right. So if we're lucky and everything works and the way that I've seen this work, uh, I've never tried this. This is all brand new. So we're going to pour the plaster in. We're going to put the netting inside. It's going to dry all day. And then in the morning, tomorrow, I'm going to open it up and we're going to see if it shows. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, it might be a little bit of an ordeal to get the plexiglass portion off, but we'll see how that looks. Um, and uh, the plate part should probably pop off fairly easily, so we'll see. Um, all right. So now comes the part where I have to hot glue gun. So I got a simple hot glue gun. It's kind of drip in here, so. good okay and it dry it's already dry so it's holding it in place um, now I don't know how much glue guns cost but I'm pretty sure they're fairly inexpensive um, this is my wife's so I told her what I was doing I so said I was gonna borrow it she does it all the time with the kids to do kids crafts and she loves to make uh, seasonal reefs and they work really well for her. Yeah. 